Thank you, Diane. And hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Nelly Navarro, and I am with Integrated Community. I am also an immigrant. I moved here about 16 years ago. I was born and raised in Peru, and I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I have, my heart has two homes. The one that I left behind back in Peru, and the one that I have built here, where I have my family, my friends, and my community. So let me also introduce you to my friend and co-worker, Irina Vitya. My name is Irina Vitya, I'm with Integrated Community. Even though I was born in this country, I was raised in Mexico until the age of 12. So I understand firsthand the barriers and struggles the family faces when moving to a new country. Tonight, our community has come together to listen to these seven amazing immigrants tell their stories. They have come from all over the world and speak different languages. Within our group of guests, we have artists, interpreters, advocates, and even a police officer. All of our storytellers are driven by a vision of a future that is brighter than the past. And they are truly an example of the human spirit. So some of the stories you will hear tonight talk about love and pain and doubt. Some of them are descriptions of violence and death, but some of them are also happy endings. And they talk about success. So as we listen to their journey, we'll understand why did they move to this country? What was it to leave their country behind? So tonight, for me, and for a lot of my people, <laughs> we're so excited. It's such a special night to celebrate not only the seven storytellers, but all immigrants as a whole. So with that being said, let me also introduce you to our first storyteller. Her name is Milena Muna, and she comes from Colombia. Her story is one of love, finding love, and also finding inner strength, not only to advocate for herself, but to be an advocate for others. So Evelyn is gonna tell her story in English, and if you need an uh, interpretation, you can hear your headsets in Spanish. So please, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Milena Munar to the stage. Thank you very much for being here and it's an honor for me uh, to be able to tell my story. Every immigrant journey is different, so here is mine. Winter of 2007, that was the first time I stepped on North American ground. I came to the United States with a J-1 visa, with a program called Work and Travel. The first time I saw the program, I thought, wow, work and travel, such a perfect combination. <laughs> <laughs> so I said I should enroll in that program, and that is what I did. It wasn't such I was thinking it was gonna be, but it was a great experience. So this program sends people to work directly to a specific location and a specific place here in the United States. In my personal case, they sent me to this beautiful but isolated town in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Not offensive. I love this town. Believe me, I love it. But you all, the community, is what I like the most from here. So they sent me to work at McDonald's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I hated it. Don't ask me why. I only worked there for one week. <laughs> I was lucky enough to find a different job. Cleaning houses. So it was hard for me because I was a spoiled girl from my mom. And I didn't have to clean such hard, such, such I had to do it at that time. It was also kind of embarrassing for me because I was working towards to get my first degree uh, on humanities and foreign languages there in Colombia. So I was asking myself why I came here. 
why I put myself into this position and I was literally on my knees cleaning a toilet. <laughs> so I'm coming, coming from the middle class. I never thought I was gonna end up cleaning houses and cleaning other people's toilets. I obviously don't want to denigrate this job. I, on contrary, I want to honor it because it's not easy. It's physically exhausting. So when the people ask me, how did you end up here in a steamboat? Now you know a little bit of behind of the real cause that brought me here. But I always said, Life put me here, and that should be for a reason. I think you will see that reason later on in my story. One of the first things I did when I came here was went to get a camera so I could get some memories for my adventure trip. Of course, this was the first time I was experiencing the snow. We don't have snow in Colombia, so for me it was beautiful to see every every place so white. So I went to Walmart. Um, this is where a love story begins. <laughs> there was a guy named Jeff who used to work at the photo lab department in Walmart. <laughs> so when I went to get the camera, guess who assists me? Yeah, it was Jeff. <laughs> One day that I was at the store looking around for stuff, he approached me and he asked me, are you done with work for today? And I said, are you asking me out? <laughs> he smiled and he said, yeah, that's exactly what I am doing. <laughs> We went out to have dinner and he almost chopped with his foot when I told him I was married and I had a son in Colombia. In Colombia, I wasn't happy. I was in an abusive relationship with a very possessive and a machista, which means Chavanese person that one day almost broke all my ribs. This trip helped me to decide that I wasn't not going to be with one person just because we have a song together. So I always wondered why I had to live the life that I had to live with this individual. Now I know the answer of that. You will see it at the end. Um, so after I went out with this wonderful guy that used to work at Walmart at the photo lab department, we start a nice friendship that then I had to go back to my country. In Colombia, I decided to get a divorce. And guess who was happy about that decision? This is the time that all you say, Jeff. <laughs> Yes, of course. He was very happy about this. So I started the divorce, the divorce process and then we start like a formal long distance relationship. He went to Colombia three different times. We traveled, we had fun. The last time that he went to Colombia, he took me to a beautiful tropical paradise place and he proposed me. Of course I say yes. <laughs> so I wanted to come back to the USA as soon as possible. That was the plan. But I wasn't going to come back without my son. Now, my husband <coughs> made it hard for me just because he wanted to have the power and control over me took my son away from me, so I wouldn't leave. It took me six years between to get my son back 
and to get the divorce, to be able to be reunited with Jeff again. Six years that he patiently waited for me all of that time. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Jeff is an awesome, awesome person. The best that I could give to my little one, Ethan, who is now five years old. Love and the desire to be here was more powerful. So after having all of this beautiful, very difficult time in my country, I was finally able to move here with my older son almost six years ago on February 28, 2014. It was a huge change for us. My older son, Miguel, who was 14 at the time we moved, and me. We used to live in a big city, and then we moved to a small town. No malls, no big amusement parks, no Colombian restaurants, <laughs> and a very strong cold weather. <laughs> but that was not the real issue. Language was the big one. I study English for five years in my country. I thought it was going to be easy for me. But no, it wasn't. When I arrived here, I was only slurring and babbling some words. My main, main goal at the moment was to improve my English level and be able to communicate without any problem. Then I start some ESL lessons and at the same time it was a strong mind to find a job that allowed me to use my native language as a resource for others and also to allow me to improve my English at the same time. After a while I was very fortunate to find a job with these specifications. A job which could give me the opportunity to use my language as a tool for others. So I am proud to say that I start my journey with advocates around town. And that is how I start my journey, helping others and helping for them to find their strength as I, find, I found mine. I, this job has taught me to do everything with compassion, passion, and love. Not only advocates, but in the very community have given me what I was wanted to have, a job to give me the opportunity to help others. They both are great agencies with advocates. I am now the shelter manager and a bilingual advocate for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. And with integrated community, I am an interpreter and translator. I believe I have improved my English level. <laughs> you can't judge me now. <laughs> I am so happy and proud of what I have achieved throughout these six years. I had a wonderful family, which I love with all my heart. Wonderful jobs that I really enjoy to give something for my community. And then I studied um, associate as a paralegal so I can continue helping those who need it. I believe I have become a great example of what an immigrant can achieve in this country. Never stop wanting what you want to be and never stop dreaming. It is not easy, but it's not impossible either. Thank you very much.